Welcome back. This is a short video to answer activity 3.2 from the textbook for topic 3 hardware. We're going to be looking at embedded systems and increasing the CPU's performance. The questions are on embedded systems and CPU performance. Embedded systems, particularly GPS navigation. So here we go. Explain how it is possible to increase the performance of the CPU microprocessor. In your explanation, include some of the risks associated with your suggestions to improve performance. How can we improve the performance? Well, we could increase the width of the address bus and the width of the data bus. We could increase the clock speed. We need to be careful that when we increase the clock speed, this could cause overclocking. By using larger cache memory, this uses static RAM rather than normal memory, which is uses dynamic RAM. By using larger cache memory, this uses static RAM, which has faster data access times than using normal RAM, which is dynamic. By using dual or core processors or quad core processors, but remember doubling numbers of cores doesn't double the processor performance. This is because the CPU needs to communicate with each core, which does use up more time. So there's some possible suggestions to increase performance, but I've also added some things in terms of what are the risks associated. Um, what is meant by the term instruction sets? Instruction sets but basically are a set of operations which are decoded in sequence. But in terms of what? Well, each of these operations are made up of an opcode, which informs the CPU about what operation needs to be done, and an operand, which is the data which needs to be acted on within the register. There are a limited number of opcodes that exist, and this is known as the instruction set. Instruction sets are low-level language instructions. These instruct the microprocessor on how to carry out operations. So that is what's meant by instruction sets. Okay. Now we move on to part two. A car is fitted with the latest GPS navigation system. This device is controlled by an embedded system in the form of a microcontroller. Firstly, we need to describe the inputs needed by the embedded system and describe which outputs you would expect it to produce. So. First of all, how do we find out where we're going to go? What, what, what do we do? The destination address needs to be inputted into the GPS, into the navigation system. Other factors such as avoiding toll roads, choosing the quickest route, maybe even adding extra stops such as um, visiting landmarks or um, uh, filling up for petrol may be included there. These are also inputs. The data from satellites is collected to give very accurate timings to the destination. Okay. The GPS navigation systems use satellite data to calculate the position of the car on the stored maps within the software. Obviously, um, the screen of the navigation system is telling us about all these different positions, basically where the position of the car is. This may be shown as a picture, a graphic of the car, where the position of the car actually is on the map, and um, tracking through the journey, basically what step we're on and where we need to get to. Okay, how many minutes are left in that particular journey? And part B, since updates to the GPS device are required every six months, explain how the device is updated without the need to take the car to the garage every six months. Okay, well, why do we need to do updates? Well, um, obviously town planning and everything, build more roads, maybe build roundabouts or maybe close roads and add new roads. We need to do updates. How can we do them? Well, the updates are done by using a satellite or a cellular network used to download the latest maps, updates, or software updates. If the GPS navigation system is a portable unit, it can be connected to a computer via USB port and new map software will be downloaded to it. If the GPS navigation system has a slot for a memory card, a micro SD, then updates can be loaded and installed via this device. So that's how we would do it. Either connect um, um, to Wi-Fi, a cellular network, and download the maps to the actual device itself in the car, or take the device out of the car and um, connect it to a computer using a USB port, download the software, or if it has a slot for a memory card, such as a micro SD, then we can update via that. that. That answers those two questions and those two parts for each of those questions. Thank you very much indeed. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. 
And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.